Welcome, my ASEAN brothers and sisters of the Convocation. Today's video is a story of betrayal and possibly love, a theory about Vana and Fandaniel working together behind the scenes. We're going to be discussing real-world astrology, zodiac signs, Final Fantasy XII, and other pieces of evidence from Final Fantasy XIV that can lead us to this conclusion. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy. Final Fantasy XIV's Central Conflict is a war that has raged for thousands of years. 12,000 years ago, Hydaelyn and Zodiark came into existence, and after a long battle raged on, the world and everything in it was shattered into 14 different shards. At the center of this conflict was an ancient city known as Amarat, with its ruling body the Convocation of Fourteen. An opposing faction, led by the Amaratine known as Vina, summoned Hydaelyn as a direct counter to Zodiark and caused the sundering of the Source. However, I've been diving into the lore and theorycrafting side for a while now and something has been sticking out to me. I believe that Vina and Fandaniel are working together and may have been for centuries. Now, I know you must be thinking, but soldier, Vina is the heart of Hydaelyn and Fandaniel is an Asian. There's no way they'd work together. Stick with me here, I know it's going to be a lot to sift through, but I promise this is going to blow your mind. I've put a lot of research into this, and I'm fairly certain you guys are going to love where this is headed. So, to begin, much like the other Convocation members, Fan Daniel is named after the Scions of Light from Final Fantasy XII. His zodiac sign is the Lion, Leo, while his Scion of Darkness version is Hoshmal, Bringer of Order. With all that in mind, I want to take a look at Vina. Vina is the heart of Hydaelyn, but in Final Fantasy XII, Vina was a member of the Gods of Evil East, known as the Akuria. The Akuria created both the Scions of Light and the Scions of Darkness and held dominion over the affairs of man. Vina in Final Fantasy XII became opposed to the ways of the Akuria and decided to side with mankind, helping the Empire's evil scientist Sid and Emperor Vain Solidor. Starting to sound familiar here? Vina in Final Fantasy XIV decided to side with the new life on the planet and became the heart of Hydaelyn to not only keep Zodiark in check, but according to her, protect all the new life that had sprung up on the source. Let's go back to Fan Daniel for a bit. Fan Daniel is a member of the Convocation of Fourteen. however, now that Elidibus is not in the picture, Fan Daniel has chosen to follow his own goals. He states that these goals are to destroy anyone and everything, including himself, and that he bears no loyalty to Zodiark and his brethren. But why would a person who holds a seat of the Convocation not align with the same goals as the rest of that group? We don't know his exact motivations yet, but we do know that his plans involve the current Emperor Xenosia Galvis, which is what ties us back to Vina's relationship in Final Fantasy XII. I also fully believe that it's possible that Fan Daniel was never loyal to the Convocation and has always been a Judas, so to speak. For those unfamiliar, Judas is an infamous person in Christian religions that betrayed Jesus to the Romans, causing his death. Zodiark was the savior of the ancient world during the final days and could be compared to a Jesus or godlike character in Christian religions. Now let's go back to Vina for a second and talk about her etymology. Vina is derived from the Latin term Venari, meaning to hunt. Xenos is constantly saying that his goal is to seek the thrill of the hunt and find worthy opponents. Vina is also related to Persian mythology as one of the four royal stars with the modern name of Regulus. So for this video's sake, Vina equals Regulus. Anyone want to take a guess what constellation Regulus is a part of? If you guessed Leo the Lion, you'd be correct. Regulus, also known as Vina, Alpha Leo, or Corleonis, which means the lion's heart, is the brightest star in the Leo constellation. The specific star pattern that Regulus belongs to is also an interesting connection. Regulus, which can also be called Alpha Leonis, is a part of a star pattern known as the Sickle. And another name for a Sickle is a Scythe, a weapon that Xenos has decided to take as his new toy. So here we have Vina being the brightest star in the Leo constellation, and Fan Daniel is an Asian associated with the Leo Zodiac symbol, and is also working with a character whose main weapon is now a Scythe. Let's also take a look at the moon itself and how it relates to Regulus the star. If we look at Regulus, we can see that it's a blue colored star, also going with the bluish white tones of Vina's color scheme. However, and I won't go into the full theory here, but a theory that the Loreline's crew has presented me is that color inversion is a major hidden secret in the game. In various moments throughout the game, a massive force of ether has caused the color of the screen to invert and change appearance. We also know that when the battle with Zodiark was over, Hydaelyn sealed him inside the moon. If you look at the moon in this scene at the end of patch 5.55, where we meet with Vina for the first time, you can see that the moon is a deep orange color. Can you guess what color the moon turns when you invert the colors? It turns a deep shade of Regulus blue. Now I want to say that this is the stretch part of the theory, because that could just be our tinfoil hats picking up static, but it's interesting to think about, and I think every theory needs a crazy side. 
but that's not all when it comes to their connection. In 5.55, we finally got to meet this mystery woman featured on the key art of Final Fantasy XIV's Endwalker expansion. I had theorized in a previous video that this woman was Vina and that we would meet her at Silvertier Lake. After finishing 5.55, we now know that that woman that appeared called out to us in a similar fashion to how Hydaelyn has always called out to us. She featured a white robe, a confirmed Amartine mask, and featured similar physical features of the Oracle of Light, meaning this woman is Vina, the heart of Hydaelyn. Moving forward, we also need to take a look at her mask as it has a very unique design on it. If we look closely, we can see what appears to be a creature with wings and horns. The horns are in the middle, with the wings going up each side of the mask. If you think this creature looks familiar, it's because it's none other than Hosh Maul from Final Fantasy XII. If you do a side-by-side -side comparison, you can see that the horns and the arms or wings are a perfect match. You can also see that Hosh Maul has circular structures engraved in its shoulders, and in the shoulders of the creature on her mask, you can see spirals. Keep in mind, spirals are also a symbol of Charlian culture and architecture, but we'll get to that in a minute. Much like we discussed earlier in the video, Hosh Maul is the Esper and Scion of Darkness that we obtain in Final Fantasy XII. But why would Vina feature a mask with Hosh Maul's design on it? In my opinion, it's because Hosh Maul is the Scion of Darkness associated with the constellation of Leo, whose Scion of Light is none other than Fan Daniel. And as we discussed earlier, Vina or Regulus is the brightest star in the Leo constellation. One thing that I almost forgot to mention but is actually kind of simple is that Fan Daniel's associated element is Earth. Hydaelyn is not only the primal, but also the name of the planet that Final Fantasy XIV takes place on and looks a lot like the real world planet Earth. Hydaelyn's crystal resides within the planet, taking her place as the will of the star. Could just be something I'm looking too much into, but it is worth noting at least. There's also the fact that we see a Charlian spiral in one of Fan Daniel's locations. In the dungeon crawl demonstration we got at FanFest 2021, we got a great look at some of the new dungeons that will be featured in Endwalker. However, if you look at the very first dungeon shown, you can clearly see the Charlian insignia embedded in the floor of this platform. Why would one of Fan Daniel's dungeons feature the symbol of the Charlian people when we know that Charlian is fairly untouched? And going back to Vina, why would she be wearing a mask that features Fan Daniel's Scion of Darkness? Now, I want to point out something else that furthers this connection. In a segment on the Final Fantasy XIV 2021 FanFest website, the team all wrote little notes, including their spirit job, their favorite NPCs, and a message for the fans. In Natsuko Ishikawa's favorite NPC segment, she had something very interesting to say. She stated, If I went out of my way to pick characters that haven't fully been revealed yet, I'd say Fan Daniel and his, and stop to put three question marks instead of finishing her answer. Fan Daniel's what though? Who would Fan Daniel be associated with besides Xenos and Elidibus? As far as we know, these are the only two people that Fan Daniel has revealed that he's associated with. I fully believe that it's Vina, but what exactly is she to him? His mother? His sister? Maybe even his lover? What is this mysterious NPC to him? If we go by the Regulus connection here, Vina could be Fan Daniel's brightest star, or possibly reversed. This brightest star terminology can often be used for loved ones such as a child or even a significant other. Shakespeare even refers to Romeo and Juliet as two star-crossed lovers, which we know 14 has used elements from Shakespeare in the past. So who exactly is Ishikawa referencing and what relationship do they have with Fan Daniel? Yoshi P also stated at the Endwalker announcement show that Fan Daniel is holding a deep, dark secret that is yet to be revealed. Could this secret be as I've theorized and he was the Judas who betrayed his brothers on the convocation? We already know that he held great disdain for Elidibus and his plans, and he even goes as far as to state that he holds no loyalty to Zodiark. We also know we've got a rogue Asian on our hands, but words like that lead me to believe that he may have been that way from the beginning. If we look at the Convocation as a political power, it's not that impossible that each member may have had their own agendas, and some not as pure as we want to believe. As a side note, when Fan Daniel first appears on screen, he's wearing a white robe. Now this could just be because he was wearing white in Stormblood and that it's just Asahi's funeral robes, but it's still something to keep in mind when discussing Fan Daniel and his relationship to Vina. A lot of what the 14 team does is completely deliberate, so I could honestly see this being one of the clues that they've laid out for us. My question is, what would Vina and Fan Daniel's plan be? Could they have been using us to destroy the other Asians, making room for Fan Daniel to finish their plot? From the very opening cutscene, we've been shown by Vina and Hydaelyn that the Asians are dark and evil and that we're supposed to defeat them. In the first cutscene when starting a new character, you're faced with La Habrea. Hydaelyn grants you the power of your future job class, and in a flash of light, you defeat the Asian. 
We have been groomed and conditioned from the beginning to do exactly what Heidelin and in extension Vina has wanted us to do. If I'm being honest, I fully believe that Vina chose us on purpose, knowing who we really were and using us for whatever it is she's had planned all these years. As we know, we're Asm the Traveler, and we also know that we didn't take sides in the summoning of either Heidelin or Zodiark. If Heidelin wanted to defeat the Convocation, choosing us makes the story come full circle. Yoshi P has also stated before that Heidelin and Zodiark aren't necessarily good or evil respectively, and Shadowbringers taught us that light doesn't always mean good. It's also interesting to note that there's one time where Vina was very adamant about something. She told the other Amratine in the Anamnesis Anitor flashback that she was the only person who could become the heart of Hydaelyn. We know that this isn't necessarily true because Elidibus was not always chosen to be Zodiark's heart. Originally, it was supposed to be Logriff, who we know as Gaia, so why exactly was Vina so adamant that she had to be Hydaelyn's heart? Overall, while we know very little about Fandaniel and even less about Vina, the connections between the two are extremely strong. With the evidence I've provided, I fully believe that these are not coincidences and that Vina and Fandaniel are working together and I honestly believe that they have been for a long time. But with any theory, I want to know what you all think. Are Fandaniel and Vina truly working together and what relationship are they to each other? I can't wait to find out as we walk the end together. Hey guys, thanks for watching this theory video and don't forget to limit break that like button. Let me know in the comments section below if you're excited for Endwalker and to unravel the mysteries it holds. Subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell to join the ranks of Soldier today. And for all the latest Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker news, rumors, theories, and trailers, I'm Soldier First Class, and I'm on to the next mission. Later guys.